Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today with my review for State of Decay 2. A big thanks to Microsoft for providing the review copy over a week in advance and made for a stress relieving review period. I love the first State of Decay, that's no secret. It was a surprise hit on the Xbox Summer Arcade and now we finally have our sequel. I think the big question surrounding this game is can its mechanics, a zombie focused post apocalyptic title, stand up to the test of time? Now, I don't want to start off my review with a negative. I'm usually not a big fan of that, but considering it's immediately apparent, this game isn't that pretty. I think Borderlands on the Vita gives it a run for its money if I'm totally truthful. I mean, look at this example right here. These are supposed to be the shadows for a tree and I think a fence. I'm not sure what's going on here, but it's obviously not looking good. This game has a lot of tech issues. Not only does it not look that great, but sometimes it doesn't even run that well. At the price of $30, some may be willing to look past that, but it's still something worth being aware of immediately off the bat. Now, State of Decay has never been known as a graphical showcase. What it's been known for is addicting gameplay hooks, which State of Decay 2 carries the torch as the explore, survive, collect, build out your base, repeat hook, is there and oh my gosh is it addicting exploring the world of state of decay 2 is so satisfying because every run for supplies feels like a genuine trek the reason for that is its lack of fast travel and limited supplies things sometimes don't go according to plan oh i'm just gonna go to this building hopefully there are medication supplies there turns out there's not enough for your base there so you have to make another trek all of a sudden you're out of fuel now you have to find fuel then it's nighttime which this game does incredibly well making zombies more of a threat more come out at night and also your only source of light is either your flashlight or the headlights of your vehicle things can get dangerous very fast in state of decay too now while there isn't really a story here which may disappoint some for those who are always looking for that story experience in a game you will not find it in state of decay what you will find though is as you could tell from what i was describing in that situation there a very organic game world how the world feels real where humans can betray you during quests even though you're doing a favor and trust is built on those favors so you're really trading trust for trust and when i help someone out and they help me out in return i genuinely want to go back and help out that settlement or whoever's struggling again if they call for me for a favor but one thing that video games don't often do well is zombies and in state of decay they are very much a threat you are not playing some superhero even if your skills are built up quite a bit in this title and you'll actually feel pressure while playing state of decay 2 which personally maybe this is because i play a lot of games but i don't get that a lot the pressure comes from your settlement because there is a morale setting you have to appease everyone if morale gets too low then some of your most precious settlers will leave everyone has their own personal goals you have to avoid low resources wipe out infestations or play hearts maybe those personal goals tied to personal quests or you have to help out nearby allies also sometimes even doing the right thing in state of decay 2 can rub certain settlers the wrong way and cause a big dip in morale so there is this odd level of choice and consequence in state of decay 2 although it's not much of a role-playing game so to say now you heard me mention plague hearts earlier what are those basically scattered across the world are these plague hearts and they are the source of the blood plague zombies with red eyes can spread them to all of your settlers and they can be a cause of death very fast if you don't treat one of your settlers they can turn into a zombie and if you don't have the right supplies to cure one of them well they're as good as gone you can either exile them you can execute them or you can create a cure and spend precious resources to save them taking out these plague hearts is not easy though as it requires explosives and a lot of ammunition and when you start attacking those plague hearts a lot of zombies are gonna come your way and you can take an additional follower with you from your settlement but now you're both at risk i've often walked away from taking out these plague hearts with both of my followers contaminated by the blood plague but that's the big thing with State of Decay. Keeping your characters alive and leveling up is rewarding. Yes, I did say leveling up. As you use certain skills, like if you run around a lot, you get a cardio boost. If you fight a lot with melee weapons, you'll get a melee boost. Once you level that up, you can select a skill. Based off how you want to build out that character, maybe they're better with blunt weapons or bladed weapons and they get special attacks with that. Or maybe they're more proficient in shooting. Perhaps this character goes on mainly looting runs, so they loot at a quicker pace and can carry more on their back. The choice is yours on how you want to build out these settlers and building them all in one path will actually go to your detriment so the game rewards experimentation but naturally in a game like this you'll become attached to one character who can do it all you can eventually make them your settlement leader these are new and very pretty much there are multiple types of settlement leaders based off how you build your character you can be a dictator and run this wasteland like it's your own damn place or in my case i was more of the sheriff and helped out as many people as i could nearby because i liked earning supplies from them and making 
making life a lot easier. But you can sure as hell take control of everyone, get them mad at you, end up in firefights. As I said earlier, this game really does have that odd sense of choice and consequence. Now, I didn't get a chance to test this, but there is also four player co-op. I think that is a huge selling point nowadays, considering the low amount of co-op games out there on the market. Experiencing those anxiety ridden moments of almost losing your most important character in a game with your friends actually sounds like a blast and I think that's going to be a big selling point for folks. My biggest issue with State of Decay honestly were the tech errors. Like I said, the game didn't run well, it didn't look good, and also I feel that initially in the beginning it overwhelmed you with a lot of information. While the game is very organic and I learned most of it naturally, I felt there were so many pop-ups and UI and trying to jam information down your throat that I truly wish the game turned them off by default and let the player figure it out for themselves because that's the best way to learn it and the natural way to learn it, I felt. If anything, the UI started to feel like an intrusion. You can also explore new lands in State of Decay 2 and set up settlements there. So, like I said, there's a lot of replayability here. Despite tech errors for $30, I have to say that this is one worth looking into if you are into the gameplay loop. This is not for everybody, though. There is not a story here. There are tech errors, and there is stuff you're going to have to look past to fully enjoy it. I was able to do that and I had a good time, so I do recommend this game. But if you're not feeling too convinced, I wouldn't blame you to wait for maybe a price drop of $20. Or if you have Game Pass, this one, no brainer. If you've never tried Game Pass, get the trial. You can have it for free for, I think, like what, two weeks? Definitely at least worth that. I'd give it a look. That'll do it for my review of State of Decay 2. If you have any questions, fire away in the comments down below. I'll be trying my best to answer you guys on anything that I missed in this review. And I'll catch you guys next time. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook. Those links are in the description down below, along with my Patreon. Do consider supporting that as it fuels all the content we create here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.